my bring my bullet journal everywhere I go. That's non-negotiable. And it's, it's odd to people because I'm such a tech person and they're like, well, have you tried Evernote? And have you tried Google Keep? And have you tried? And yes, I've tried every one of them. And putting pen to paper is, that's one of my non-negotiables, I guess. I'm Andy Petronic, the co-founder of the Whole Life Challenge, the inspirational game that helps thousands of people around the globe take action each day to improve their health, fitness, and well-being. Join me each week on the Andy Petronic Podcast for interviews with guests that will help give you ideas, get inspired, and take action toward being the best and healthiest version of yourself you can be. Hey, 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 welcome back. <laughs> I almost said welcome back, party people. And uh, maybe you're not party people, but you're, you're back for another episode of the Andy Petronic Podcast. This is episode number 143. And uh, my guest today is Megan Maroney from Twit TV. And I'll tell you a little bit more about her in a second. But we are in major enrollment phase for the summer whole life challenge. The reason I... I mention this is first of all it's our first ever whole life challenge in the summer it starts on July 7th and by the way if if this is like three years in advance in the future and it's not on July 7th this is July 7th of 2018 uh, and it is a continuation of our six on six off cycle that we started at the beginning of the year six weeks on of accountability and being uh, on it in relation to your health and well-being, improving your habits and being just a little bit more focused on the seven daily habits that are going to take you into the next level of your health and well-being. And then six weeks off where you're a little bit more relaxed. It doesn't mean you fly off the handle in the six weeks off and it doesn't mean you're you're in a boot camp the six weeks on. Our thinking on this, our philosophy on this is really the people that tend to do the best in life are the ones that allow themselves the flexibility to cycle things on, cycle things off, never be too rigid, uh, never be, uh, never be too soft on themselves either. Like letting themselves fly off for, you know, six weeks with no, without being accountable at all. And really, if you want to win the long-term health and well-being game, that's the mother load. The mother load is figuring out a way to stay engaged long term. And when I say long term, hold on to your hats. I, this is not, you know, long term is not a year. Long term, it could be five years. I mean, it could be 10 years. If you think about where you are today and how long it's taken you to get where you are today, Maybe it should take you 10 years to get get back what you had 20 years ago or 30 years ago or even 10 years ago. I, I don't know how far you slipped. It's not a short road. When I first started training and working out, uh, I, rem- I and I was in really good shape. It wasn't even I didn't I didn't I wasn't first starting working out. I, I was already a sponsored athlete. But one of my coaches, actually Coach Greg Glassman, who started CrossFit, said to me, he goes, Andy, you know, your squat looks like it's a it's a beginner's squat and it'll take you probably five years to get to get to a more um, refined, um, mechanically sound squat. And I I thought he was completely nuts. But man, he was 100 percent right. In fact, I would say maybe even took me more like eight years. And um you know, I'm still working on it. It's still something I'm working on. So six weeks on, six weeks off. We went six weeks on in the spring whole life challenge. Then we've been in a period of six weeks off, which we're still in, but we're ending. And we start again six weeks on on July 7th. Look, if it does nothing else, then then help you keep one or two habits Better than you would have had you not because it's summertime, because you're on vacation, because you're traveling to Europe, because you're enjoying yourself and eating great food 
and you don't want to be bothered with healthy habits, look, you don't have to make it your life. You don't have to make it about your life. You can make your life fit into some of the some of this accountability around just doing a little bit better than you did before. And if you can incorporate one or two things that keep you on track and don't let you completely destroy any of the work you've done up until this point this year, then I say it's worth it. You've got to make that decision for yourself, but I say it's worth it. So starts on July 7th, and uh, that's my pitch to you guys. I will have a team in the Whole Life Challenge. I haven't announced my team yet. I will announce my team name next week, and I will invite all of you to join me um, for the journey together. And um, that will be a whole heck of a lot of fun. So, and if you know anything about me, I don't take a super hardcore approach to any Whole Life Challenge because I do every single one, and I am in it for the long game. I'm, I've been doing it for six years and I'm going to c- continue doing it and it helps keep me on track. And I, I kind of live by the words that I just spoke about. So that's my approach. And I'd love you to join me if you're game whole life challenge.com. Yes. So my guest today is Megan Maroney. Now you probably haven't heard her name before. You know, I love bringing people into the, into the podcast whose name is not known like Jimmy Rosenberg last week, but you know, like Jimmy is really the reason that there are fresh cold pressed juices in the world, naked juice and evolution fresh. Megan is a, um, tech journalist, technology journalist. She, um, along with Leo Laporte started something called twit TV, which stands for this week in tech. And, she is navigating the, a, a very male dominated world as a producer of shows about technology, about um, phones and iPads and Apple TV and watches and, and how to use it, how to implement it in your life. Uh, Leo Laporte, I, I was kind of a complete like starstruck geek in this podcast because I was a huge I still am a huge Leo Laporte fan. I used to live to listen to his radio show on KFI back. Uh, this is before my son was born because the show is on on Saturdays. And uh, Leo has just this incredibly cool way of making very techie things non techie. And the reason this whole podcast happened is Megan started tweeting about the fact that she was going to do the whole life challenge and she became a, became a challenger in the spring whole life challenge. And a few weeks into the challenge, I reached out to her on Twitter. Uh, we started a dialogue. She, she tweeted some really funny things. And by the way, if you do nothing else, go to the show notes and click on the link to the Twit TV review of the Whole Life Challenge. It's hilarious because Leo isn't on board at all. I mean, Leo thinks it's ridiculous that anybody would spend forty nine dollars on an app, and you know, obviously, he's not really thinking about this as a life changing game. He th- he's thinking about it in relation to an app in the App Store, and yeah, of course, it's that silly. Nobody charges forty. I mean, almost nobody charges forty nine dollars for an app in the App Store. But the review is really, really fun. And Megan is awesome um, in her ability to kind of navigate these waters. But she's a mom. She's a mom of three. She's a, a, a wife. And she, uh, you know, she has figured out a way to make health and bring health and fitness into the limelight in her life. Her husband does as well. And um, she, we talk a lot about tech. We talk a lot about different apps. We talk about music and brain training games. And this is really mostly a conversation today um, about really fun things. Well, fun, super fun for me. And uh, hopefully it's really fun for you. So I'm going to stop talking now and bring in Megan. I hope you enjoy the podcast with Megan Maroney of Twit TV. So uh, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being on. Oh, thanks for having me. It was so funny when, um, so my um, graphic designer, graphic artist, she doesn't really have it. She doesn't really have a title, but she's responsible for really so much of what we do in terms of our marketing and our social media. And um, uh, when she set forward to me your tweet, because I don't really follow Twitter that much. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I'm like, wait a second. I know who that is. And I know Twit TV. And I, I know Leo Laporte. I've been a massive... This is more before my son was born. So I was thinking back, why don't I listen to the show on KFI on Saturdays anymore? And it's because I coach soccer and I coach baseball and there's always games going on during the show. And I know it's available other times, but I used to listen to it. I mean, my wife used to make fun of me because I would get in the car and I'd have it on in the car and then I'd go home and I'd be working on a project and I'd turn the radio on and listen to Leo. And I think it was before you were to you guys work, did it together or I don't know if that's a separate show or a different show. The tech, the tech guy. Yeah. The tech guy. um, So Leo and I started working together in 2000. So 18 years ago, it wasn't before that. It was not before. (laughs) that. So yeah, we started, (laughs) so it was before his KFI show before his, um, you know, before the tech guy, um, which is not just on KFI. Obviously, it's it's uh, everywhere. But yeah, so we worked at Tech TV, which was a cable network, um, and it was called ZDTV before that, and it was television about computers, and it was great fun. And I know that you had Daria Rose yeah. on your show. You interviewed her. Her yep. husband Kevin um, was on the network too, and he was oh he wow, was cool, young. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, right. He's still kind of young, isn't he? I mean, he's not as old as me anyway. No, he's young. I mean, I just remember him as like a, yeah, he was, I think he was like 21 or something. Wow. When, you know, it was 18 years ago. So yeah, you right. can add it up. Right. They just had a baby. Yep. Um, yep. And super excited. I've always him. wanted yeah. to, I've always wanted to have him on the show. Maybe that, maybe that could come out of this. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, well, yeah, he's, uh, he's fantastic. He's, um, a, he's a little bit of a celebrity. So, um, yeah. you know, booking people like that <laughs> yes, is, I, you know, are, is interesting. <laughs> And I mean, a lot of like, I mean, we can get into this, but his, uh, his meditation app, um, yeah, it's great. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, great. Yeah. It's great. I love it. And it's totally free, which is nice. I mean, I always yeah. feel weird about like some meditation, you know, it's just they're constantly bugging you to subscribe and I get it that developers need to make money. It right. makes sense. But Kevin doesn't really right. need right. to. Yeah, that's his thing. He's just like, okay, well, I've you know I've invested in all these companies, and you know I want to make a meditation app, and I'm just gonna do that for free. It's like his habit. But anyways, I, it's funny. Yeah, tech- I, yeah, it's funny. I was just talking to somebody yesterday about um, going into business. She this this woman wanted to start a rock climbing. I mean, a ice climbing gym. Oh. And you know, I was a gym owner for 15 years, and I've done a bunch of business consulting, and. Um, you know, she had done no numbers. She had done no, you know, analysis. And I'm like, look, look, if you're independently wealthy and you just want to do something really great for the community and build a place, spend your money and do good for people and you have no need to make money, don't call it a business. Just call it a hobby. It's fun. I, this is my project. Mm-hmm. But if you need to make money, you better fall in love with spreadsheets and, yeah. um, you know, fall in love with the financials before you make any moves because you may find on a piece of paper and a napkin even that this just doesn't work. You yeah. know, I don't know. Maybe it does work. I, I don't know anything about an indoor rock climbing gym. I mean, indoor, indoor ice climbing gym. It seems way more challenging, yeah. you know, than yeah. God, it seems daunting to me, but yeah. Um, so yeah, we worked at tech TV. It was television about computers and it was uh, in San Francisco and, um, no one in San Francisco really got the network. It's a lot of satellite cable and people outside of cities that got it. But we just kind of did whatever we wanted. Um, And it was, you know, the internet was different and uh, computers were different. It was a lot of people just building their own systems. And, you know, it was before iPhones and before any smartphones. Isn't that weird that there was a time before iPhones? It's weird. You think back and go, huh. I like, I have a hard time thinking back before the iPhone iPods because yeah. I remember that day that I realized I could carry around every to every song in my entire music library. I still remember back to when I crossed the country. Uh, I was in the Marines. And so I drove from the East coast to the West coast in like five days. And I had all of my CDs. They, they're the only things I didn't really pack. And I just listened to my library, you know, like, and that day that I realized my entire library was on my iPod. I was like, this, this is, cha- this is change of the world. I mean, like it was unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, it really is. I mean, the, the time, what's crazy to me is that when I, my daughter is, my oldest is 15 and she is, you know, she was a baby with 
no, I, there were no iPhones. Like right. I can't, you know, people are always judging women who are on their iPhones while they're breastfeeding and stuff like that. And it's just like, well, I don't judge. I can't say I probably, I remember having my laptop on my lap and checking my email because yep. that was what I knew. <laughs> right. Right. You use what you got, right? I mean, yeah. that's what we do. Yeah. Yeah, so then um, the network, I left uh, when I was pregnant the whole time on the air, which people love to watch pregnant women on TV. That's why, like, the other people are all like... <laughs> Do they really? I think so. Like, there's the trans... It's like, there's... It's a story. You know, yeah, there's a beginning yeah. and a middle and an end to it. And yeah. I think that people like that. And also, I think people like to watch uh, people slightly uncomfortable. Huh. Huh. Just, you know, I think that was a thing. Of course, this is before YouTube as well. So there was just not that um, much out there. But I still hear from lots of people who are just like, oh, I came home from school and I watched your network. And, right. you know, it's just telling a story that um, people hadn't heard and really just showing nerds who didn't know any nerds that there were other nerds out there. And <laughs> it was OK right. to be one. Right. But, how many times can you use nerds in a sentence? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I mean it in the fondest way. Of course. Possible. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was, um, and, you know, it was before people really were connecting socially online, really. And so, again, it was like the people's first communities with that. So, you know, Leo was the host of um, of two of the big shows and... Then I got pregnant with my daughter and I just didn't want to commute to San Francisco. I live in Petaluma, which is about an hour commute. And so I um, and I didn't really think that TV was what I wanted to do. I had really no background in that. It was just kind of like, oh, let you know, we need that. What they that they actually said was we need more girls on the show. Right. I was. Well, were you a tech? Time, so were you a tech person like Leo? Like, is that your background? Um, in not, like- no, not, I mean, I started then like, yeah, no, I have a creative writing background oh, really? and um, that's what I went to school for and, you know, going to write the great American novel someday. Uh-huh. I still am. Yep. Yep. <laughs> someday. Cool. It's on the list. <laughs> yeah, no, but I just followed the yellow brick road to San Francisco and, um, in the late nineties and they were, you know, just hiring lots of liberal arts majors to do various things and I just you know found myself I was I was really like a web editor you know that was like when you could just teach yourself all that stuff and and it was all dudes on the show and they just said you know we need more girls and so I they were like you (laughs) and so Uh that's how I started and yeah it was uh it was great fun until you know just having a baby um and commuting an hour just didn't really make sense so I um I had worked on some books, uh, some tech books with someone who had just moved to Microsoft. And they said, you know, we're doing all this content for women who, you know, for moms and you know, using technology to stay at home. And so I just wrote for them and, um, and did that for 11 years. Wow. Which, wow. yeah, it was, it was when you just find yourself, uh, it was a great job. It was good money. It was, I got to stay at home. I, you know, went right. to Microsoft is in Redmond, um, Washington. I went maybe two or three times a year and that was great. Um, and I got to drive my kids to school or walk them to school. And, um, and you know, it was, it was a time, uh, where I just sort of put my interest in my job on holds for probably a little bit longer than I needed to, but that's mm-hmm. what women do sometimes. Yep. Men do too, um, I think. Yeah. I mean, some men. I, think, I kind of, what was that? I said some men. I, I don't know. I, yeah. Yeah. More. Yeah. I think, yeah, I did. Some men totally do that. Yeah. I mean, I think men, men do definitely do that. Um, yeah. I don't know why I said women. That is more of a like, okay, yeah, I just need to provide for my family. Um, sort of thing. You're absolutely right. It's women and men who do that, who um, what they're doing 40 hours a week is um, not that interesting, but it serves other needs. And for me, that was flexibility. And and my husband's an English teacher. And um, so it was, yeah, I mean, I just suddenly realized after 11 years that like, maybe I want to do something that is more interesting. And Mm -hmm. in that, in the meantime, uh, tech TV had gotten sold to Comcast. They turned it into G4 TV, which was just a lot of um, video game content yep. and women jumping on trampolines occasionally. <laughs> I don't know if you've watched the network. No, never saw it. No, never saw it. <laughs> um, and then Leo left 
And he, um, that's when he started doing the radio show. Oh, um, okay. Probably around 2004, 2005. Right. right. Um, and then, uh, God, and then that's he when he started. S- that's when it started. Wow. Cause I, I must have been a listener right near the beginning of that show because I found it on Saturdays and then just glummed onto it. And it was yeah. early. It was my son was born in 2007. So it was in those years before. I remember doing home projects in my, my first house. And, uh, yeah, I can, I can like pinpoint moments of listening because I called in a couple times and I talked to Leo a couple times. So like, yeah, so I, and then when you call in, you have to, you're on hold for a while. So mm-hmm. you're listening to the show and you're on hold and you're like deciding when you turn the radio down to, to, you know, start talking, you know, all the logistics. Um, don't want to lose the question also. Like I had to write that down, like to make sure I didn't lose myself in some other topic he was talking about. Um, so yeah, no, I, I didn't realize that I was listening to near when he started that show. Huh? What do you remember what your question was? Oh, God, it's funny because I had converted to a Mac in 2002. Uh, my my friend was constantly heckling me about using Windows and that I needed huh. to convert to a Mac. And I'm like, why would I convert to a Mac when I can buy a new, you know, machine for 500 bucks and a Mac costs 2,000 bucks? I don't remember if that was the price point difference, but it was a big difference. And he goes, it just, it's like, it's just a thing of beauty. Like it's just everything works together and it, you know, and, and I just decided, okay, I'm going to give it a shot. And I've never looked back. I've always been a Mac person since that time, but I don't remember what the question was. I'm sure it was Mac related. Um, might've been setting up a new computer. I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't remember. Well, I said that I wasn't a geek before, but I've always like, I've always loved Macs. Like that's always been, and that's sort of like, I feel like that's the creative person's computer. And my dad was really into Macs and we had one when I was really young. Um, like just like we had one of the first Macs and stuff. So it's always, for me, it's always been like a tool. Was that like to, an Apple two C was that like, uh, or yeah. right, right after that was the Mac that was the score, the rectangular box. It was black and white. Yeah. Yeah, we, we had one of the first Macs. I think I was probably in eighth or ninth grade. I don't know. Um, yeah. But yeah. It, it we was... had one in our fraternity house. We had <laughs> It was at the end of the hallway, and we all shared it, and we played these silly, stupid black and white games on it. Yeah, and, uh, Tetris. Yeah, and, uh, and it, had a, it had the three and a quarter inch drive, and uh, I don't think it had the five... Was it three and a half inch drive and a five and a quarter? I think it had a five. I think it might have had both or maybe it didn't. Maybe that was like remarkable and like, whoa, what are you going to do without the five and a quarter inch drive? Like, how do you, yeah. everything's on a five and a quarter. How do you, like the way Mac always does, you know, comes right. out with USB-C and all your yeah. power cords are US mm-hmm. are, don't work. Mm-hmm. It's insane. It's and no- then, yeah. And you say, we're not, we can't live like this. And then. And then you need, like you that. know, dongles up the wazoo to get, to yes. connect your stuff. It's insane. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, we could spend the next hour talking about dongles. Yeah. Um, oh. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. So yeah, and then uh, Leo in 2005, it was right after I had uh, twin uh, twin boys. He started a podcast network with Kev- Kevin. Kevin wrote like he started. They just were they were at MacWorld one uh, MacWorld in 2005, and they just uh, sat on the. Uh, ground with Kevin Rose and Patrick Norton, who was the co-host of the screensavers. That was the show on tech TV. Uh-huh. And, um, I think maybe John C. Dvorak, who's an old computer oh, yeah. guy. I've too. read his yeah. articles in PC mag and, uh, yep. yeah, totally. And then See, yeah, I'm, they a nerd. Just I'm, I'm one of your people. <laughs> <I'm> totally. <laughs> like who people. else? I don't know if anybody listening to this podcast has any idea who we're talking about, but I don't care. <laughs> Cause no. I, I'm in heaven right now. This is awesome. Well, that's the that's the funny thing about doing this it's like you know the first nine people you tell people like oh that's cool there was a network about and then there's you know the 10th person is like oh my uncle used to watch that or like my aunt loves you or you know it's just i mean we had just a passionate group of people you know it wasn't just people flipping through you know it's like you must have had a reason like you had the same i'm you know, 99% of it is, is Leo. He's just an amazing uh, person. Like he didn't start in tech either. He's just a radio guy, but oh, really? um, he's always been a geek too. And um, yeah. And he just brings people in. He's just one of those people that. Um, yeah. That he's, can, he's amazing. Uh, he is amazing. And, and his, his ability to simplify things um, into, into a way that just regular people can understand 
I've always been fascinated by that because as a, as a fitness coach for as long as I have been, you know, part of my job was always to simplify really, really technical movements that are compound, that are functional, that require balance and stability and all these things, Sim- d- dumb them down into a way that people, regular people can understand what I'm talking about and, and get it quickly. And, I, and yeah. I've always found that Leo was just masterful at doing that. Mm-hmm. And not making people feel dumb or wrong right. or stupid or, you know, like, oh, God, how could you ask that question? Yeah. You know, like, you know, no question was below him. Right. Still yes. probably still probably isn't, you know? Yeah. Um, speaking of feeling dumb or stupid, I feel like maybe my let's talk again. I might my headphones might not be coming. Having hello, the audio. hello, 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 hello. Oh, hello. yeah. I think it's coming through my audio. It's not this little thing. Um. And wanna... can you are you hearing feedback? No, no. Okay. It sounds great to me. All right. Then um But your take... if your headphones are not working then you don't really need them. <laughs> no, I don't. They're, they're more like earplugs, you <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like why is he so quiet and why can I hear myself? Um anyway, yes, technology making you feel stupid. Um You're not supposed to have do mistakes like that. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing about tech TV too—it was live television, yeah. And so things would go wrong constantly, and I think that's what people liked. Too. Yeah, right, totally. Yeah. So 2005—that um, was before podcasts really sure, existed. Yeah. yeah. And his was one of the first, and you know, he asked me to be a part of it, and I had, uh, you know, a two-year-old and two newborns, so that wasn't something that was available to me. In 2008, we did a podcast about technology and parenting um, for a short time, about a couple, a couple years. Um, and that was good because he has, uh, his kids were in high school at the time and mine were, um, you know, four or five, like preschool age. And so it was good. It was fun to do the show together. I mean, that topic is so hot in my school, my son's school. He's 11. He's going into uh, sixth grade next year. How do you control this this out of control weed like Fortnite now is like the, you know, and I'm playing Fortnite. I'm trying to, I, I you know, the, the thing I found with Fortnite is I'm not a gamer. So playing it on the keyboard, it, it, it it's so foreign to me, like finding the, I know where the keys are supposed to go and I know what I'm supposed to do with my mouse, but I'd have to play it a hundred times or, and I'm not willing to invest that amount of time. So mm-hmm. I've been trying to play it on my iPhone, which I can't see anything like I, I, I like my son says, Oh, grab that weapon. I'm like, what weapon? I don't see any weapon or, <laughs> or what did you, you, you know, what, what weapon do you have? I'm like, I don't I can't tell a difference. So, yeah. um, so yeah. And then I tried to use an old iPad to play it. And it's of course, it was an iPad that I hadn't even turned on in three years. And of course it's too old. It won't, it won't work on that iPad. So, you know, so those are modern day, uh, first world problems. But. Well, and any, but any parenting, I mean, any parenting expert and parenting technology expert would tell you you're doing exactly the right thing because, you know, rather than saying like, oh, Fortnite, my kid's addicted to it and I can't stop it. Like play it with them, right. you know, just, right. and he wants out. to play it with me, which is kind of fun. Like he's like, yeah. hey, let's play. And I mean, I'm not, I'm really actually terrible, um, but you know, I'm not a help, but it's fun. It's still fun, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, my claim to fame is I, I was on a squad that got second place in one one time. <laughs> it wasn't because of me, though. I just happened to be on. I died really early on. But the squad, the one person in the squad actually, uh, you know, took second place, which is, yeah, that's my claim. <laughs> I got second. <laughs> now he's won, you know, I don't know how many times he's had first place. And yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. But yeah, so but- keeping up with like how to. Mm-hmm. what are the rules what are the boundaries what are the you know functional things you can do in your house to to we had a we had a person come and speak at our school about you know she has a a charging station that's their that's their home base for all that kind of stuff and when mm-hmm. they when they they have rules around at 7 p.m. or 7:30 p.m. everything goes on the charge in, in that dock in that mm-hmm. place and so they they know that that's that means no no use of that stuff just because it's such a it pulls everybody in the family away from being and connecting with each other. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We have the charging station in our room, um, in our bedroom. Even though like I didn't like having my devices in the bedroom, it you know it's sort of it's too tempting for everyone, yeah. um, you know, to 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 use them and 
and you know a lot of my kids friends say well how do you you know i i use it as an alarm and it's like well get an alarm clock right right (laughs) that is you know it's just too much to hear those bings and bongs in the middle of the night like to connect to that so yeah oh yeah and don't get me started with like what i do and sleep because bings and bongs and leds and lights and you you'll you'll never get a good night's sleep and you sleep is probably of the four pillars of of health I don't know that one is more important than sleep. Like Mm -hmm. if you want to lose weight and you're not, you're only sleeping four hours a night, guess what? You need to work on sleep first, Mm -hmm. not your nutrition, which people are like, what? They, you know, but that's what I've seen over the years of doing this. Yeah. Sleep is my best part of the whole life challenge. I keep getting owl points and, um, I haven't gotten to use them. (laughs) Well, that's actually a good thing. We, you know, we used to, when we first started the whole life challenge, we, uh, we used to allow people to accumulate points above and beyond a perfect score. So you could use your bonus points as additional points on top of like, and the the problem we found very quickly was people that are overachievers and love are addicted to points and want points. They wouldn't use their bonus points. They would just accumulate more and more and more points so that they would win as opposed to using these things. And we, we were like, look, that, that that's missing, completely missing the point of, right. of, uh, of having them. So we, we shifted the game. We've learned a lot of things over the years, but that, that was one of the early on, early on lessons. Well, sorry for the interruption, but this episode is brought to you by the good kitchen. Now, if you haven't heard me talk about them before, they have transformed my lunch. I get five meals delivered. Actually, I get 10 meals delivered every two weeks. They come in a FedEx box. They are fully prepared, cooked. They are vacuum sealed. All I got to do is heat them up. And sometimes I don't even heat them up, to be honest. I just open them up and eat them. And they taste fantastic. They are either keto or vegetarian or paleo approved. Uh, They are whole life challenge approved. They're organic and they're from sustainable farms and sources in North Carolina. And it has literally transformed my lunch life because I don't have to think. I don't have to think about anything. I just open it up and go. It's fantastic. So I highly recommend you give it a shot. The uh, The link to, to try out The Good Kitchen is thegoodkitchen.com forward slash WLC. And if you use that link, you'll get 15% off your first order. So do that. Highly recommend. And um, let's get back to the show. Yeah, so I guess that takes us up to to uh present well 2015 i started working at um twit which that's the network that um leo started this week in tech and we have you know about i don't even know how many shows but at least two a day including saturday and sunday two a day wow yeah including saturday seven days a week yes wow yeah leo does two shows every day saturday and sunday including one of those is the radio show right Um, and then, um, he is, he doesn't work. Oh, I guess just starting a couple months ago, we started, we decided to close the studio on Monday. So there's no shows on Monday. That's brand new because, um, he was just doing too much and, um, he could do it, but, um, it's healthier now that he doesn't. Yeah. (laughs) So, and then there's, yeah, two shows on Friday that are done by, um, different people. And then I host, uh, tech news weekly once that's every thursday Mm -hmm. and um that used to be a daily show but it turned out to be a lot easier to do it uh once a week and um rather because it's just you know how it is keeping up to the speed of tech news it just was too fast and too um shallow i think so um just doing it once a week we can go deeper into the topics which is really nice i appreciate that and then i do the show uh where we talked about the whole life challenge that's iOS today. That was hilarious. That was just a hilarious. I mean, to hear Leo heckling you about, you know, spending forty nine dollars for an app. What? Who who spends forty nine dollars on an app? You know, and of course, if that's the way you look at it, you'd never spend forty nine dollars on an app. Like that, yeah. it seems ludicrous to me too. Um, you know, but, but it makes total. I would not. I mean, I just have to say that really, because I mean, I'm I'm forty five, and uh, it is. Uh, not as easy at 45 to lose weight as it was when my twenties and thirties, 
in my early 40s, which I guess maybe I'm still in my early 40s. But I just, you know, I have a full time job and three kids. And I was wasn't thinking about what I was eating yep. really at all. And I had exercise down like exercise is something that if I don't do that, I'm mentally not um, OK to be in the world. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. right, <laughs> right. Something. Your husband and appreciates it. Your kids appreciate it. Your yes. dog probably appreciates it. Like mm-hmm. Leo, I'm, Leo, yeah, all your coworkers, <laughs> yeah. right? Get her to Everybody. the gym now. Yeah, <laughs> get her a treadmill. Buy a treadmill. <laughs> put it in the studio. Yes. Walking desk. Uh, and so, yeah, the um, but the food stuff. I think I just you know I'm moving fast, grabbing whatever, not thinking, working in an, I think, con, you know, changing from working at home where I had con, more control over my, what was in the refrigerator to, you know, working in an office that, um, you know, I, I worked at home for 11 years and then right. three years in an office full of, you know, just the worst kind of garbage. Right. Um, there's healthy foods too, but I wasn't choosing them. Like I just really, I like just after starting well, the whole life challenge, I was like, we have almonds here. <laughs> I had no idea because we're, they were behind the Fritos. Well, this might make you feel better. You're wired to think that way. Like that's mm-hmm. how you're wiring. That's how our wiring as human beings work. We're wired when we see something that is sugary, that will get, provide us with this instant kick of energy and taste good. Those are all biological mechanisms that 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 are work on our in our psychology. They work in our neur- neurology. They work in our physiology, and that's the way you're supposed to work. So mm-hmm. it's no wonder if it's available. That's what you see. You know, your brain filters out. I don't know the number, but your eyes are capable of seeing. I don't know how much more than your brain can see, but so your brain filters out so much of what you see. So you don't even really know that they exist because you see the brightly colored M&Ms next to the almonds and you don't need to see the almonds. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not your fault. (laughs) We all, we all, I mean, I, people think I have this, you know, somehow this superpower of, you know, I'm like this health, healthy guy. I, I am healthy. I mean, I've been practicing these habits for years, but you put a, quart of ice cream in my freezer and I it's eight o'clock at night and I'm watching, you know, Westworld or some other show, there there's a good chance that I will down that quart of ice cream or you know, uh as much as I know I shouldn't. As much as I know this is a treat, this is not there for me to, you know, a sleeve of Girl Scout cookies I should not, you know, open up and eat, but mm-hmm. I do. Yeah. Um, so I like, to, I try to not keep it in the house. Um, I don't even win that battle, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the funny thing is like a lot, of, I know a lot of women who are just like their, you know, good, healthy eating habits are foiled by their husbands, but yep. that wasn't my case. My husband, like, I think he read the article in like 1999. It was about, you know, just carbs and bread and you know just the fact like that was the first time any science pointed to you know what like carb loading is silly and right. doesn't make sense and um perhaps you don't need to really cook your vegetables so he's the, he's since then he's been the kind of eater where like he'll just eat a you know a raw pepper like an apple mm-hmm. and just you know he's italian so he'll eat pasta but only if it has meat in it and right, you know just right. to counteract and uh-huh. um i said like we probably would have had healthier children if um, he had carried them instead of me. <laughs> uh, yeah, but they're, they're, they might not even be here if men had to carry the kids because <laughs> yeah. we couldn't go through it. I don't think we have the ability. We're not wired that way at all. Yeah, probably. Get yeah. this out of me. It's been three months. Is it almost, are we almost done? Get it out of me. Done. I'm done with it. <laughs> Um, yeah. So, uh, where were we? Uh, we're just, we just caught me up on basically the last 20 years of your life. And (laughs) Mm -hmm. we were talking about, well, I I got some questions for you. So how, how did you come across the whole life challenge? Like what, what occurred that, you know, that led you to be like, I want to try this. Well, in February, my best friend from college lives in LA and I went out to see her, um, for a vacation and just girls weekend. And, um, she was like, I just started this thing. It's called the whole life challenge. And, um, and she explained to me what it was. And I was like, well, that sounds crazy, (laughs) especially because in a good way or not, not such a good way. Uh, it's, I just, I, it sounded interesting. She's not the type of person that, you know, just chooses to 
do all kinds of, um, you know, she's not a fad diet person. Uh She's a surfer. She's always been healthy and, um, she works in public, she has a public health degree. She works Uh in public health. She works for the Gates Foundation and she's a scientist. So (laughs) it didn't seem crazy. Like, you know, some things sounded crazy, but I just, I thought like, because we were having a girl's weekend, you know, we were celebrating. I was like, well, you can only have one drink. And, you know, she, it actually, what, what made what was interesting is that she was able to celebrate you know to still like it wasn't like oh we can't do that we can't do that right um and it made me think like gosh i remember when that was like when celebrating when you know having three drinks instead of no drinks was you know a, a nice celebration as opposed to just something you're normally doing and then there is no celebration you right, know it's just right. like you know i'm constantly i'm eating bread and for breakfast i'm eating you know a sandwich for lunch i'm eating ice cream for dinner you know there's free donuts at, at work and and nothing is exciting anymore it's all just what i regularly do and so i was like i'm gonna do it with you next time like tell me when it's um you know, happening next time. Mm-hmm. I, I really want to do it. And so um, I knew that it was, it started April 14th because that was my kid's birthday, but mm-hmm. I'd sort of forgotten because I was on another vacation. <laughs> I was in New York um, and I, you know, I was on another, another vacation, which wasn't really like, you know, eating worse than I normally do, which is, um, you know, was normally pretty bad. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she emailed me on the 14th and I was like, oh, okay, well, I've been traveling all day. I had a biscuit for breakfast, <laughs> frappuccino for lunch. <laughs> I haven't exercised. So like, I think I was like, but I'm starting it. So like, uh-huh. I had a horrible score on yeah. that first day. And then the second day, like, I was like, I'm going to have toast. I'm going to have whole wheat toast thinking whole wheat toast was on the it's healthier. Yeah. Thank- <laughs> That's what it, I <laughs> mean, I you, like, you ask people in around the world, like, you know, most people will say, first of all, I eat, I eat pretty healthy. Like that's, that is the most common answer I ask people say when I ask them, hey, so how's your diet? Oh, I pretty, I eat pretty healthy, you know? And then, yeah, I had, I had a, I had a slice of whole wheat toast for breakfast and I had along with my coffee. And then I, you know, I had a, a salad with fat free dressing at lunch. And then I had, you know, and I took the croutons off and then I, you know, had a, a light dinner or a, you know, I was hungry and I ate a good dinner. Yeah. It's just, the things that people think in their minds that are healthy are not necessarily supporting their, what their, their objectives are in their life. Mm-hmm. Cause they, we've, the, our, our food industry has done such a great job of, of disguising um, the foods that they make and calling them nutritious or healthy, uh, you know, and kind of pulling the wool over our eyes. Absolutely. Yeah. So I had done like, um, when my kids were around five or six, like when I, um, you know, just having three, just coming out of the fog of having, you know, two, three, three kids under three. (laughs) Did you have twins? Like, how did you have them so close together? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I had, uh, my, my twins were born two years and one week after my daughter's was born. Wow. It was a pretty, it was pretty overwhelming, um, time for, so I, I did, um, Weight Watchers uh-huh. then, and I lost like 15 pounds or, you know, 20 pounds. It was, and it was great. And I was very, it was before smartphones. So like it was, I was at my computer all day because I did freelance. And so just, I liked, you know, putting everything in and, you know, mm-hmm. counting all the points. And it was very, it was, it was mindful, but, you know, after a while that just got exhausting. Right. You know, I didn't, right. I didn't feel like I needed to pay for Weight Watchers anymore. And then I tried right. my fitness pal and I would do that for a couple of days. And then it just, just writing down all of the calories and, you know, and I found myself, I would discuss this with Leo a lot. Cause whenever we would talk about fitness apps, you know, I would say like, I like the idea that you can just shoot the barcode and mm-hmm. it will tell you how many, um, you know, how many calories and fat and everything and he's like well how much food are you using that have bar that has barcodes how much food are you eating that has barcodes and i was like a lot i was like maybe that's the problem he's he's right (laughs) (laughs) like i like that technology too but if i'm shopping well there's nothing i'm buying that's got a barcode on it i mean not maybe not nothing but very little yeah so that is one technology that, I mean, I get it. Like it's, you know, easy convenience foods. But I mean, what I've learned a couple of days ago, I was running late. Like I forgot to make myself a lunch and I looked in the refrigerator and I had an avocado and a hard boiled egg and I grabbed them 
And and it was like I never would have done that before. But what I mean, would you have just, grabbed? What would you have grabbed before? Cheese stick wrapped in plastic with a barcode. Um, <laughs> probably I would have just gone to Starbucks and eaten a frappuccino. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> or yeah, I would have um, gone and gotten a sandwich. Yeah. Or even worse than just a frappuccino, would you have grabbed a croissant maybe or a muffin or something? Or that's no. not your thing? Well, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I had like the, um, I enjoy the uh, egg white and feta wrap, which uh-huh. probably isn't so bad. Right. But I think it's a flour tortilla. So I have avoided yeah. those because I think they have a flour tortilla. And, and just making your own food rather than grabbing food at, yeah. at Starbucks is better anyway. Well, I always tell people it's, you know, it's the 80, 20 rule. If you're, if you're, if you're doing it well, 80% of the time, then go ahead, have your, have your, your, it's kind of like you said, the celebrations, the celebrations don't become celebrations if you're doing it every day. So if you make your normal day without celebrating, like no donuts and no, if you want to have a day where you go to the donut shop and, you know, have uh, voodoo donuts or sidecar donuts or whatever. Okay, cool. Have, have you knock, knock yourself out. It's actually good for your soul. It's good for your, you know, you're having fun muscle to, uh, to allow yourself that freedom. Um, don't, you know, we always used to say, don't let your, don't let points, don't let the desire for points in the whole life challenge <clears throat> over override your, your, your willingness to be, to have a happy, to be happy and to have a fulfilling time. You know, like if your daughter's getting married, don't avoid, don't not eat a piece of the cake. Like mm-hmm. just because you're on the challenge and you want the points, you know, you're missing life in that case. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, it's been I'm great. So my, my friend, uh, Liz, I'm on her team and it's her, uh, friend, her surfing friend, her friend's wife, and then her friend's wife's sister. So oh. there are five women around the same age and, uh-huh. and I don't really know them, but I feel like I, I mean, well, first of all, uh, you know, even though, I've known Liz for, you know, since college, a long time. We don't, you know, we, we probably connect once every couple of months or something, but this is so nice because we're connecting every day right? and reflecting. Um, that was something that was a surprise. Was it new that the reflect, were the f- reflections private in the past? They've never been private. No. Oh, that's so funny. Cause she said. People she get didn't... upset. People sometimes get upset by it. They, they think that these is like private journaling and we're, we're really clear in the setup. Like yeah. this is not private journaling. So, mm-hmm. cause, cause we feel like there's so much isolation already in the world. Mm-hmm we don't need to practice private journaling. Like this is a, this, the, the whole power of this thing is to be vulnerable with other people and to pra- mm-hmm. and to practice, you know, like it, you don't, you can tiptoe in and you don't have to share your deepest, darkest secrets in your, in your team, but um, there's value to, to that practice. And I, it's really good to hear that that is a cool connection point for you and, and, and her. Yeah, absolutely. I'm like planning a trip to LA to, to hang out with her, with a, my team. Yeah, cool. <laughs> um, yeah, because it's just, it's, a, it's so nice to know that people are struggling with similar things that you're struggling with. Right. And I'm doing the kickstart and they're doing the next level. The lifestyle level, yeah. Lifestyle, yeah. So, but I already signed up for next time and oh, I signed up for lifestyle. So I... Um, next time's a big experiment for us. We, we, in the past, challenges have been eight weeks. And prior to this year, they've been eight weeks long and we've only done three a year. And we decided we made a very conscious decision. We've been thinking about this for probably four years. Like what's the best way to utilize the challenge? Because eight weeks was something we just made up um, Mm -hmm. when we first started it and we never changed it. We're like, why is it eight weeks? Well, back then we didn't, uh, we only did one a year. So, we are the thinking back then was, well, you need, if you were going to work with a private coach, somebody was going to work with me. I would never work with them for less than two months. And usually it would be like four or five, maybe even six months. So we thought, okay, well let's eight weeks would probably be the minimum in order to really see some change and whatnot. But now that we're doing three a year and then moving to four a year, the, the, the sweet spot in the challenge is not once, You, you know, you really don't, most people don't get it in the first one. They don't get the points are very, very helpful in keeping them accountable and the team and whatnot, but they don't get the, this is the less change and shift that happens between an on challenge period and an off challenge period, the better. 
Like you want those two periods to meld into one, but it takes time to develop that and practice over and over again. And you want to take the lessons you learned, go back, live your life. Maybe you keep one or two around for six weeks and then you go back into the challenge where you're accountable again. And that practice is really, really valuable. I've done every challenge almost accidentally. Like I didn't set it up to do that, but um, I've learned something new about what I'm up to each time I've done it. So it's become a way of life for me. Yeah. Well, that's the goal, I guess, right? Yeah. I'm, well, the goal is really like we don't want people to necessarily be WLC participants forever. I mean, I wouldn't turn them away, but um, learn what you need to learn. Go out and live your life. And if you don't need to lean on the challenge for support and structure and, and accountability and teamwork and community, then don't to just go out and take what you like. That was my always my, that was always my goal as a trainer. I, I hated to see trainers who would hang on to clients forever and ever and ever and ever. My goal was I want to teach what I need to teach and let them learn what they need to learn and then get on with their life. And if they, if it means I can do it in six weeks, great. If it takes six years, okay. As long as we're growing, as long as their the clients moving. So I, um, that was a philosophy I brought into the challenge. Well, I think of it sort of as like therapy. Like when I'm, you know, when, I you you I'm like am I ever going to be done with therapy? Right, right. <laughs> you know? And my therapist just says, you know, well, it's it's you can be done anytime you're ready. You can you you'll be yeah. fine. But like yeah. this is something that you're giving to like a gift to yourself. Like this time right. is a gift to yourself. So I sort of feel that the same way about this. Like, yeah. well, you know, it's it's self care which right. is worth paying for. Right. I think if you think about all the things you pay for. So, um. Yeah, I don't know. It's only my first time, so I, but I don't know how long. But yeah, I right. Sign up for right. The next one. It well, it's, it's interesting like. too that you know the context of, like Leo was making fun of, you know, who pays forty nine dollars for an app. Um, if you put it in the wrong context, it sounds absolutely ludicrous. Yeah. But if you put it in the world of personal training, forty nine dollars mm-hmm. for six weeks for something that might actually change your life in six weeks forever is ludicrously cheap. I mean, yeah. I, I have people tell me all the time, they're like, dude, you don't charge enough for this. You, it, it needs to be 79, 99. Like it's, it's not expensive enough. Cause look at what happens to pe- people pay. You can't hire a trainer in LA or San Francisco for $49 for one session, mm-hmm. you know? Oh, well, I guess you could, but be really hard to keep them <laughs> charging you that little for that for very long. Um, for one session, for one hour, you know, like <laughs> it's, it's kind of crazy when you compare what we're doing now. I know there's no one-on-one work, but okay. So two sessions with a trainer or, you know, two, you, you hire a trainer for an hour and then bring on the whole life challenge. And, uh, when you put it in that context, it's ludicrously cheap. So mm-hmm. yeah, it just depends on how you think. Well, also there's the motivation. I mean, for me, I think I was trying to figure out why this worked and all the other things that I've tried um, haven't worked. And I think it's it's twofold. It's the um, the money. And for me, that's just a motivating factor. It's mm-hmm. why you have a gym membership. You know, right. it's like it's the right. same thing. It's like you're putting money on the table. You have skin in the game somehow. And then not yeah. everyone's psyche works that way. Like some people, that's, that's not the way what motivates them. But, yeah. but it's me. It's the money. And then it's the accountability to my team. So like, that's part, that's where the, I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know, (laughs) but, um, but just for for me, like uh, the accountability to the other people has been so important, like checking in every day and, you know, I'm part of a team. I got to pull my weight and, Mm -hmm. um, I can't slack off here and, you know, I'm there for, for everyone else. And you just, those two things. And also just the fact that there's, there's an end point to it. It's just, you know, right, it's not right. like, oh, I have to eat like this forever for the right. rest of my life. And I know in the back of my mind that, yeah, like I'm not, I, I don't want to think about bread and desserts and everything the way I was thinking about it. Like it's not healthy. It doesn't serve me. But, but just the idea that like the challenge lasts six weeks and then, you know, it's done and then we'll right. see. It's, it's one of the things that you, you know, you said before, um, that I've always fallen down with around the, uh, some of the other fitness apps. Cause I, my phone is just littered with, um, experimenting and trying fitness apps 
um, mm-hmm. just because even if I wasn't doing a whole life challenge, I would be doing that because I love technology and the intersection of technology and our life. And um, uh, I've always found this weird thing when I don't have a community and I don't have other people and I don't, and there's no endpoint. even, even the coolest app, like, like I have this app called Habitify, which I mm-hmm. love. It's fantastic. Like the UI is so simple and it, it's so easy. Like I've used a couple others that have not been that simple and that been that easy. And I'll go pretty consistently for a month or a month and a half or two months. And then I invariably as slick as it is and as great as it is, cause I, there are other habits that I like to track that are additional to what we're doing in the whole life challenge or just deeper, um, or more specific. I shouldn't say deeper, just more specific. And, um, you know, I start ignoring the reminders and the notifications and I just, you know, it just invariably just stops as, as cool as they are. And the challenge, it doesn't happen for me. Um, yeah, and perhaps reminders that's, are something that those the you know they just they work for a certain amount of time yeah. and then they stop working. Yeah, and especially if you have too many of them, they're just going to become a bother. Yeah, I have tried yeah three dozen of those habit apps uh-huh. and drink water. So you know, at yeah. one point, it's like I've got ten different apps on my Apple Watch telling me to drink water. <laughs> Shut up. So hydration hasn't been that hard for you in the whole life challenge. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> It's buzzing every three minutes. Drink water, yeah. drink water, drink yeah. water. But then yeah. it becomes white noise, right? And like right. maybe then it does become challenging mm-hmm. or stop, you know? Yeah. So I think being motivated by, you know, pulling my weight as a team and, you know, I paid for this. Yep. That That's what's motivated me more than, you know, the reminders, the constant buzzing. Okay, sorry for the second interruption, but I've got to remind you that the Andy Petronic podcast lives and breathes on word of mouth and your reviews and iTunes. So if there's something about this episode that 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 I don't that strikes a chord with you and you think one of your friends would really love the episode, please do me a favor and send them a link. Um, let them know that the Andy Petronic podcast exists. Let them know that the website for the podcast is either at andypetronic.com or at whole life challenge forward slash podcasts. We've got over 150 episodes. We've got thought leaders and incredible, incredible guests uh, over the years of doing this. And um, I would love to have more people know about it because it allows me to get cooler and funner and more awesomer and more well-known guests for all of you. So uh, do me the favor of passing that along. And um, if you're super inspired, go to this link, bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash Andy Petronic podcast and write a review. It'll open up iTunes. You can write a review from your computer or your iPhone. And um, it really does me uh, and and the rest of the world a, a great service. So thanks in advance. And now let's get back to the show. Well, given your, your you know, your background and you, you know, that you, you do this for, you, you look at apps and technology for a living. What, what things have you found to be helpful to you in addition to obviously our app or our, I don't know. Do you, have you used the website? Have you used the desktop? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, They're different. It's a different experience. Mm -hmm. We're working on, it's funny. We haven't announced this yet um, because it's still in very much in beta, but we we're working on a PWA um, Mm -hmm. that will hopefully replace our, our app. It will become the app. Like we'll probably wrap it in some sort of, um, container that allows it to be in the in the app store i don't i don't i I may be saying that wrong i don't my tech team would probably shoot me if you know maybe i am i don't know but it it would show up as an app hopefully so somebody could go to the app store and find the whole life challenge but it would be a basically the same thing as a website so that you're seeing the you're getting the notifications and you're getting the things that you would get in the in and so that we so that we can consolidate our development so that once we change something on the website, it shows up everywhere. We don't have to develop three, you know, an Android app, an iOS app, uh, you know, God knows what next platform there's going to be to develop on. Um, and so it's it's really fun. It, for me, it's like being on the cutting edge of nobody has that and nobody's doing that. And um, I'm super excited about it. Yeah. Have you thought of having an Alexa skill? Huh. No. I, I don't like my Alexa. I, I feel like there's always somebody watching. It turns itself on without me wanting to turn it on. I'm like, 
what the hell is this thing? It, it's 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 freaky for me. Um, I don't know how you know. And I have friends that can't live without their Alexa. So yeah. you know, I I don't I we probably should we probably should absolutely have an Alexa skill. I well, I sometimes listen to your podcast on Alexa. Mm-hmm. Um, and oh, really? Yeah. How do you do that? <laughs> How, is there an well, app? Hopefully, no one's listening to it on Alexa because then we're turning on the Alexa, turning it off every time oh, we say God, Alexa. That's so. right. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> I'm you sure say, you're in the minority of people that are, that do that. But <laughs> you say uh, play um, the Whole Life Challenge podcast on TuneIn. It's through TuneIn. Oh, um, and yeah, and that's then, awesome. Yeah, you can't ask it to play a certain one. Um, I don't think right. So it'll just but pick like, the most recent episode. Or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to get like, you know, I listened to the most recent episode and then I just say skip and it skips the next one. Yeah. But you should consider an Alexa skill because I um, I do use. Have you ever had an Alexa flash briefing? Have you ever used that? I have used it. That's that's one of the only things that I've used because the flash briefing is great because it gives me the news and what's going on in five minutes. Right. So you could, we have a um, Twit flash briefing. So anyone who's listening to one okay. wants to go under tech and it's just like three or four minutes of whatever, like little bit of the show. Um, but you could have a flash briefing where you just gave one tip or you're just like, oh. hey, this is Andy. And, you know, or this week's mindfulness skill is because I would Oh, that's cool. That. Oh, yeah. that's really cool. Because we used to, yeah. do, it's funny because um, when I started doing the podcast, it wasn't really a podcast. It was a we what was it? It, it it didn't really have much of a form i would interview people i had rob wolf on i had kelly starrett on um who are both buddies of mine from crossfit and uh but then we would announce well-being practices on it we would michael and i would have like a five minute or ten minute conversation about the well-being practice and then we would interview team captains and it, it wasn't until about a year and a half ago that I really was like, okay, I, I love these deep conversations with, with uh, experts and people in the world and that I really changed the form of what we were doing. But that would be really cool. I, that would be really, really cool if we could. Yeah. Um, holy cow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, do it. Because I've looked around for health ones, just like a little tip, and they're not great. Yeah. They're, and a, like, you never know with the Alexa skills. Some of them are read by Alexa, and I do not like that. Yeah, right. Like, it's got to be It personal. has to be a little short yep. bit of, um, and then, you know, you send people to the podcast. Like, so if you want more tips like this, go to, or go to Whole Life Challenger, whatever, just like a little tip. You should do yeah. it, Andy. Yeah. Is that a, how I don't even know how to start. I guess I could probably just Google creating a flash brief for yeah. Alexa and or ask your web person. They probably know. Maybe you have a web. Per- I'm sure you have a web. Yeah, person. yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. No, totally. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I tend to. Um. I tend to be. I tend to be always asking questions that are that are on the. I don't know. I don't cons- compared to you. I'm not on the cutting edge, but compared to most people at least mm-hmm. on my team i'm i'm asking questions that push the envelope like this pwa thing i was like guys are we mm-hmm. have you ever heard of a pwa i had to teach my developers what a pwa was like yeah. it, um i mean i didn't teach them what it was i asked them what it was and they're like i never heard of that and they that we started doing research and that was this wow we could this is really cool this we could really make use of this yeah um so uh yeah i tend to be yeah, just pushing the envelope on stuff like that. You can get on the Google Home too. Some, I mean, I don't know if they have the same sort of skills that they do, but um, yeah, look into that too. Okay. The, the Alexa skill to score yourself, I think, would be a much more difficult. Um, like that's what I originally thought when you said you should have an Alexa skill. Like, oh. hey, I, I earned what's my what's your like Alexa? I got five points of nutrition or three, you know, whatever. That would be much harder. No, don't do that because you could easily yeah. mess up. And yeah, then totally. Mess up. Yeah. Right. No, just a little tip. Yeah, that's great. That's really cool. Um, just a little, yeah, a little tip or, you know, here's the challenge for day today. Or Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. That's really cool. Um, so what, so, yeah, what other use, things have you found that have been, been, that have been useful? Um, well, I have the Alexa show, which is the one with the screen. Well, I have all of them, but the, the one with the screen is nice for recipes because um, you can just oh. ask it to tell you recipes and then um, you can 
you know, it, it's not just the recipes are difficult. Alexa will read you recipes, but it's impossible to actually follow them. Right. Um, right. But this is nice because it has like a little video, you know, it, it links just to usually all recipes. So you can ask specific things. That's been uh, really helpful because I've been doing a lot more cooking. Okay. Um, than, is an Alexa show like an iPad with a, with an Alexa speaker and a microphone? A little bit. I mean, it's just like uh, the regular one, but it has a screen. Okay. So you can pause that you can, I mean, you could do, some people have uh, Alexa skills that are video, like Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, I'm assuming you know who he is. Um, Like he has his on video. Um, And, you know, that, you don't even have, like, I don't think he creates new content for it. I just think somebody edits down whatever. Like, we right. don't create new content. You can edit down something that you're already doing. Right, you know, right. Like, your, um, but you could do your home workout that videos. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, what else do I use? Um, this isn't really technology, but it's one of my favorite gadgets. It's a hard-boiled egg maker. Oh, really? <laughs> from Krups. Really? <laughs> have you ever, I, I no, am. I've never seen that. Um because I just think it's really important to keep those kinds of things around, right? Yeah. Like the things that you can grab, like the avocados and the eggs. Um, and I've just never mastered boiling eggs. It's, I mean, part of it's just, um, I walk away of a short attention span or just, I don't know the exact time. So this just, you put it in and you turn a button, you pour water over it, and then it's a little machine and then it makes a really loud noise when it's done. Huh. So wherever you've wandered off to. Yeah. Um, it's my favorite gadget. Um, it can make six or seven at a time. I've got to ask you a question though. Um, in, on the same line of topic, have you ever have you heard of an instant instant pot? The instant in, pot. The instant pot. Instapot? I've heard of it. I've never used it. I think that's going to be my next big kitchen purchase. It's phenomenal. I mean, it. it the reason I ask, I've never made hard boiled eggs in it, and I've always wanted to try. So I think now that we've talked about it, I'm going to have to go and do it because people yeah. talk about making hard boiled eggs in it, and you can make anything in it. I had a friend buy it, uh, like I don't know, five or six years ago, and she she basically stopped using every other kitchen device that she had. She she would make every dish because it's got capability of sauteing and um, um, what's it called when you. You know, you want to like brown your meat or brown your chicken. You, you turn the bottom heater on and it heats, you know, it does the skin and then it's a slow cooker. It's a fast cooker. It's a pressure cooker. It's a, I mean, it's unbelievable. Um, yeah, it's I've amazing. never, like I, um, I'm a pescatarian, so I don't, uh, uh-huh. you know, I don't brown meat or anything. Yeah. Um, so but I've you could never, do salmon. Like, you, you could put salmon yeah. in it. You know, you could, I mean, I don't know that you wouldn't slow cook salmon. Right. But it's not a slow cooker, you know, so yeah. there are other things you could, you know, stir fries and um, beans. beans, absolutely beans and yeah. rice and wild, you know, all the all the wacky grains that are out there that you can get now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. And it cuts the cooking time down, you know, right. like if you have a slow cooker dish that you want to make that's a eight hour meal, it's literally an hour and it's done. It's amazing. So it's worth checking out, and it's not that expensive. Yeah. I think it's like seventy nine or ninety nine bucks. Right, and it's nice that it does a lot of different things. Like it's hard. It was you know the the hard boiled egg cooker. We have a big kitchen, so I can justify it. But it, you right. know, if you have a smaller kitchen, you don't want to buy a device that just does one thing. My wife is so sick of me bringing devices home. Like she's like, not another device, please. <laughs> I mean, because I'm the gadget guy. I'm the gadget guy in the tech in my house. I'm the tech guru person, and uh, I. It's quite possible that I had the Krupp's hard-boiled egg machine at one point, and my wife got rid of it. I, I don't remember. I do remember kind of having some sort of a egg cooker, uh-huh. but uh, it's not in my kitchen anymore. <laughs> <laughs> do you have like automated? Have you automated your house? Do you have like fancy? No, lights and- no. I've you know kind of like that's for me. That's like the Alexa for me. Like it's. Mm-hmm. I don't want m- my life to be taken over by having to do tech support constantly on everything in my house. And that it's probably not the case that I would have to do that, but I feel like it is the case. Mm-hmm. Um, so I haven't gone to that extreme yet. I put a, I put a, I have a new studio that I built on my um, balcony and I put a, one of those, um, what's the lock maker quick, uh, quick set or one of those one of those automatic locks that, uh-huh. that hooks into an app on your phone. Uh huh. 
and it's cool but i never locked the door so i don't really use it very much but it is really cool I lo- I have the Schleg. I think that's how you pronounce it. Lock. Maybe this um, is Schleg. on our front door. Maybe this is Schleg. I'm not. Is yeah, it I'm not sure. The smart lock. Yeah. Um. I love it because my kids cannot. I mean, they cannot be. They cannot carry their own keys. You know, when they yeah. come and when they start to come and go on their own, it's. You know, when I'm doing carpool, it's constantly like. Yeah. You know, the kids are like knocking on the door and looking for the key, but not at our house. It's just like a code. And you can and send then. You can send like authorization for somebody to go in your house to their phone, right? And yes. Then they can, yeah. So if can, someone's coming in to, yeah, right. you can do that or just give them a one-time code or, right. you know, th- if this person comes in just to do whatever, just during this time, you can say, you know, that, you know, that, that code only works on Tuesdays yep. at nine when they come in to water the plants or whatever it is. Right. Um, There's another yeah. one that's more, that's a universal one that, that bolts onto the, your existing deadbolt. That I was. Yeah, looking that's at. ours. Is a deadbolt like the Schlage oh. is a deadbolt. So, oh, so it, yeah. it it's yep. not its own. You don't have to redo your all your hardware in the door. You just put this on top of what you have. No, no, no. You do. You redo do. Your, you do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, there was another one that you didn't have to do that. Like it. Oh. One uh, of them just went out of business. Uh, uh, um, that is the problem with all this stuff. Yeah. Like, if it doesn't stick around. What about the luggage thing? Like, aren't a bunch of luggage companies now that we're doing smart luggage, kicking the bucket because their the airlines are. Yeah, well, they don't want to have, you know, they, they're afraid they're going to explode because the batteries are too big. Yeah, yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's well, a- with all the smart home stuff, it has to really like the it has to really solve a problem. Yeah. And and if it's going to create more problems, like they have to be smaller than the problem, the original problem that it was. Well, solved. that's kind of why I don't I haven't done it. Like, I don't really see that turning the lights mm-hmm. on and off is mm-hmm. a problem in my house. I, yeah. I don't have an right. issue with that. I don't need to automate that. Like, yeah. but I put in a ring doorbell because now I can hear the doorbell ring from my garage. And that's important to me. You know, right. that, that solved a big problem. And I can also talk to the UPS guy when he's, I can convince him to leave a case of wine when I am not signing for it, you know, right. perhaps. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, that, so yeah, that's a, that's a really good way to look at it. Technology needs to solve something greater than a problem that you're currently experiencing yes um so during the specific mindfulness challenges i use different technology the um the music that that's my jam challenge um i i um have a problem where i need to constantly fill myself my mind with information so that's the podcasts on alexa Uh you know when i'm showering or when i'm folding laundry or when i'm driving like so i have this whole long i'll never get through all the podcasts so i constantly listen to podcasts do you do and it when you know, you're working out? Do you do you do listen yeah. to pod- Wow, that's I, don't, I I can't do that. I need the I need that soul music that keeps me going. You know, when I'm running and doing stuff. Yeah, well, I used to back in the iPod days. I would um, like make certain playlists where I would put a podcast and then put a song and then put a podcast. Oh. Like I, <laughs> so yeah, right. Very carefully, like so that it, once I you know I wouldn't get too bored. I would mm-hmm. you know start running when I was running more long distances. That's what. I would do, you know, going out for like an hour and a half run and, you know, listen to a little bit of a podcast and song and podcast. Right. But, but so I, during that challenge, I, I have no problem like listening and having a dance party in my house. The only person that has a problem with that well, people are my, you know, 15 and 13 year olds. They, they used to love the home dance parties, but not so much anymore. They're embarrassed. Mom, stop. <laughs> yes. I'm waiting for that. My son's 11 and that's coming. It's coming. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Not no, yet, but just stop. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but I made a playlist. I made a WLC playlist. Um, um, I subscribed to Apple Music, which is totally worth it. Um, fourteen ninety nine a month for the family plan, mm-hmm. and then I just kept putting songs that were inspiring in there. And then wherever I was, like I have a Home Pod now, so I could just say like play the WLC playlist on, cool. um, you know, shuffle and or not. And so wherever I was, I had music and in the car i just listened to music Mm -hmm. when i was exercising i listened to music instead of podcasts it was very it was very calming because i think you know while it's a very noble pursuit to learn things constantly from podcasts i love podcasts (laughs) anyone listening to this i'm not knocking podcasts but there comes a point where like sometimes you need to turn that off and sometimes you just need music or just silence yeah instead of constant information being shoved into your brain at yeah. all times. So that was really helpful. That, um, that's cool. That mindfulness challenge. Was that's helpful. funny. Cause I, I've done a very similar thing. I, I call it my happy nine one one playlist on Spotify. Mm-hmm. And, uh, 
there's there's some songs in there now that are kind of annoying me that I haven't taken out because they they no longer are that ha- happy for me. Like I mean they they are, but they're not as inspiring. But mm-hmm. I keep adding to it. My son keeps finding songs that that are cool that I like to add to it. You know, like we he he introduced me to one the other day called Whip It by uh, Lunch Money Lewis, and it is the funnest. I I had a whole dance party in the car, you know, like one of those I'm chair dancing and I'm just going, I can put a song like that on repeat play ad nauseum. And, um, it's a great song. He's done a couple of really fun songs. He's got one that's, um, uh, called mama. That is a, like, it's a, I love you mama. It's a tribute to his mom and it's like a perfect for mother's day. And mm-hmm. I, but I like it all the time. Like it's a, he's got another one called bills. Like I got bills. I got to pay. And his, I love his stuff. I love his stuff. I need to I, God, I could get him on the podcast. <laughs> I, got, I write, wrote that down. Lunch Money Lewis. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I've done that similar thing. And then I don't have to think too much mm-hmm. when I go to turn Spotify on. I just, psh, that's my playlist. Mm-hmm. Do you use, um, do you use Sonos? No, I, I've never gotten a Sonos. Um, I have Alexa all over the house and now right. you can sync them. Right. That's relatively new. So that's nice. Um, and then I have the, the home pod, which is a really good speaker and it's nice because you can just tell it to play Apple music. If you are a subscriber, as opposed right. to Alexa, which won't. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. My wife want, wanted to make sure that she knew I was, she was leaving. Oh. <laughs> she couldn't have just texted you. <laughs> She could have, you know, no, I, yeah, yeah, she could have, but I'm not really actually, I don't even have my phone turned on. So, you know, I'm kind of unreachable. Oh, good. You guys still talk. That's good. We do. We still talk. <laughs> <laughs> she just had a very exciting thing yesterday. Um, I don't know if I should say this. Yeah. What the hell? She, she had a meeting with Lynn manuel Miranda. Oh, really? Yeah. She, she's a mu- music supervisor. She's in the music business and she puts music in movies and, um, she was so excited because I mean we went to see Hamilton last summer in New York City and uh, just that became a fixture in our house. The music for yeah. months, all we did was listen to that music and uh, just it was a very exciting. It was a very exciting to meet him for her. Yesterday. Oh, that's amazing! Yeah, we are big Hamilton fans and we have not seen it. Really? <laughs> yes. Isn't it well, up? At, it, is it showing in San Francisco now? Is it, it not now? Um, I. My kids weren't as into it when it came to San Francisco to justify the cost. But then oh, wow. it was like right – then all their friends started getting into it and they got into it. And right. when we, I almost tried to go when it was last in L.A., which uh-huh. was just recently. Yeah, um, yep. But, yeah, I mean when it comes back, we'll see it. But we – yeah, we when we went to New York, we saw um, Mean Girls, which is an amazing uh-huh. musical. Um and yeah, that I highly recommend. Well, Julian knew Julian knows somebody in the cast on Broadway. Oh, really? So oh. we got I, this crazy story. It's quick. Um, we, 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 she, so she, he is allowed to get, because he's in the cast, he's allowed to get two house seats. So the three of us went, we're in New York and cause there's only, it's only me my wife and my son. And, um, she's like, well, what are you going to do for a seat? I'm like, I don't know. I'll, I'll just, either I'm not going to go. Cause I'm not going to spend $3,000 on a seat. It was crazy. The prices. So I'm like, I'm sure like one will open up the day of, you know, or an hour before somebody will be wanting to hawk a ticket. Right. How could that not be the case on a matinee on a Sunday or Saturday? And, uh, I kept looking and I kept looking and, you know, the cheapest, I think I saw one for, for like third tier on the, you know, nosebleed. No, no, want, not going to see anything was like 700 bucks or 800 bucks. And I'm like, I, well, I guess it's not going to happen. And, uh, she got an email from her friend or a text from her friend. He said, you know, bring your husband and, and, and introduce yourselves or I'll tell the stage man, the house manager that you're coming and, and, um, you know, maybe Andy can get a standing room only, you know, that's only available for me because I'm, you're my friend. And that's, that happened. I, I spent 40, 40 bucks, 60 bucks wow. to get standing. And then he, he, he opened up a folding chair and put it at the end of the row that my wife was sitting on in the house. And I basically had a $40 seat in the orchestra for, for Hamilton. It was unbelievable. It was, I mean, not the whole story was unbelievable and the musical is unbelievable. Like it's worth, I, in hindsight, I'm like, 
I would, I'm so grateful that I didn't miss this because it, yeah. it was f- spectacular. Yeah. Yeah, live theater. I, I, I love it. It's totally worth it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Well, that got us off topic tech. No, it did. Um, um, so so, you, so you obviously, did you use Oak what, during the meditation week? Or did we have a meditation week this time? You challenge? haven't had a meditation oh, week. I almost made my own meditation week because as we discussed, the encouraging others yeah. was a tough mindfulness exercise for me because we were already encouraging each other. And right, then it right. felt like, oh, okay, we're doing it for the points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we discussed that. So then it like once I discussed that with my team members, we were just, you know, I was like, well, maybe I'll just, I'll meditate for a week. That will be my mindfulness challenge. Uh-huh. But I didn't. It's an interesting, that's an interesting point that you bring up because we have, we always get emailed when we don't include that in a, in a well being practice. When we don't, like people are like, oh God, that week that we, you have forced us to comment on reflections as contrived as that feels because now you're doing, are you doing it for points? Or are you doing it because you really care about somebody else? It always generates goodwill among teams. Like people, the, and the engagement rates just go through the roof. For even if it's just for that week, we, we've we've all we've always wanted to find another way to do it. So it wasn't based on points. Like you got some sort of a bonus, or you got some sort of a sticker or a badge that said, you know. And uh, it just we haven't, you know, we're still little. We don't we don't have million dollar budgets for developers to develop all these crazy cool things that, you know, we just mm-hmm. just a choice in how we've done business. But um, that has come up you know, quite a lot. Like, ah, are you doing it for the points? Are you doing it? Cause you like people. And if you're already doing it, do you have to do more, you know? Yeah. So, right. yeah. But yeah, so I, uh, I'm not a regular meditator. I would like to be, but, um, that's, but yes, I do love Kevin's meditation app. It's oh, really neat. It's really it's neat. Very, yeah. One thing I don't like is I like to meditate in with these off, minute periods like not five minutes not 10 minutes not 20 minutes i'd like to do seven minutes or Mm. like 11 minutes and you can't do that with his app Mm. you have to choose one of the um i think it starts at for the guided meditations i think they start at 10 minutes yeah um yeah so that's you're a seven minute meditator huh yeah i so i recently was at the uh, paleo fx conference and i bought a muse headband have you seen oh i've tried that have you so I, tr- uh, yeah, so I bought one. I, I, well, I tried it at the conference and it's, it seemed weird. Like I didn't really get, I don't really understand the technology. Like is what is it really doing? But I thought, you know, I'm very into gadgets and using things. And if there's anything that I can buy that'll get me to actually follow through on a regular basis to meditate, it's worth trying. And it was, it was fairly expensive. It was 200 bucks, but I just did, I think I did my 15th session and I did seven days in a row of seven minutes and I've never been that methodical about meditating before. So it, whether it works or not, it's getting me doing it. And Mm -hmm. for just that fact alone, it's valuable to me. Um, cause an app, I've never had an app do that. I've never had yeah. a thing do that. But it's a biofeedback. For those of you that don't know what we're talking about, it's a it's a biofeedback device that it's, it looks like a headband that goes around your head and it it's monitors your brain waves and uh and tells you when you're calm or when you're not calm. And your goal is to your goal is to hear birds chirping. They they have an audio track that goes along with it and when you hear birds chirping, you are peaceful. You're doing it. I have a funny story about the muse. I ha- I had one they um they sent us one to review, and I said, I don't have any more. I sent it back. But um, I let my twins use it, and they compete uh, on everything. So, like, this shouldn't have <laughs> surprised right, me. Right. But, like, they were co- super competitive because you it's like, how many birds do you get? Yeah. And they were like, how many birds did you get? And I'm like, really? Like, you can compete <laughs> against who's a better meditator? <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> like, yes. But if it gets them to meditate, like yeah. it's not necessary. I mean, it's kind of like the way the points in the whole life challenge are. Mm-hmm. Like you're going to play to win. Like everybody wins. You don't have to play yeah. to win. And yet if it gets you to do th- take actions that are healthy for you, okay, cool. Well, you know, we'll take that. Mm-hmm. 
that's interesting that uh, your kids yeah i can totally see that because <laughs> yeah. me and my buddy that tried it on the floor of the convention he got up from doing it and he goes he goes he goes yeah i think it was like a minute and a half demo and uh he got like two birds and he goes yeah i got two birds and I'm, and and then i went and i got up and i'm and he goes how many birds you get i said eight he goes damn it I got to get one and do it again. So he bought one and I bought one. So I, we haven't compared notes um, oh, yeah. since then. That's that's the next step. Yeah. Um, the other gadget that I just started trying was, I know you have a Peloton, right? Yeah, I do. I that that It's either the Instapot or the Peloton. I know they're differently priced. They're but. way differently priced. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I think of the things that are like, if I'm going to save my money, like those are the yeah. two big things I'm thinking of. Um, but... Uh, I ride my bike outside and uh-huh. can in San, in Petaluma like most of the year. Um, have you heard of the Lutron bike helmet? Have you seen that? The smart helmet? No. Do you ride outside? I do. I mean, that was really my bread and butter. Uh, I used to be an adventure racer and a mountain bike racer. and But I I don't ride that much outside now. I'm, <laughs> I've been learning to unicycle. And um, so I've been unicycling out, but I don't wear a helmet when I unicycle because the unicycle actually, this is crazy, but you would think unicycle is far more dangerous than a bike. And perhaps it is. I mean, you you know, but when you fall on a unicycle, if you just think about a one wheeled thing underneath your butt, if you lose your balance, you're falling vertically down towards the ground usually. And the unicycle is at this weird angle and it just shoots out from away from you. So when I fall on the unicycle, I fall and I land on my feet and the unicycle just skids away down the street, you know? So I haven't had, let me knock on wood. I haven't had any sort of a weird bang up fall ever on the unicycle in spite of the fact that I've been a beginner for five months and still I'm kind of a beginner. So I, yeah. so anyway, that's a long way of saying uh, I don't, I haven't worn a helmet, but I'm, I'm curious what, what, it, what is but, it? Well, it tracks your biking, first of all, which, you know, lots of apps do if you carry your phone or, you know, the Apple watch will track your biking, but it tracks your biking, but it also has lights on it. Um, so, you know, safety lights yep. so you can be yep. seen um, and it has blinker lights. So there's a tiny oh. little thing that you put on your, um, your handlebars and to left and right. So you huh. can, you know, press the left and the right. And they just announced that it works with the Apple watch. So I, I use my Apple watch for everything. I love it. Um, in terms of it's the best health gadget, yep. I think. Um, but it, it can, uh, you can sync it with your Apple watch so you can do gestures. So like if you're turning left and you hold your arm out, oh, wow. um, it'll just do the blinker. You don't have to press a button or it knows that you're, um, you know, turning left or turning right. Wow. Um, or just writing. So yeah, Lutron bike helmet. It's, I think it is $180. Oh, Lumos. I keep calling it the Lutron. The Lutron are the lights. The Lumos. The Lumos. Lumos. Hey, 180 bucks for a bike helmet is not that expensive. I mean, a no. regular, like if when I was racing, I mean, that was like the lowest I'd ever paid. Two, mm-hmm. I mean, 250 300 bucks for a good bike helmet was normal. So that's really yeah. inexpensive. Yeah. For all that tech that's in there. Yeah. So it's cool. I mean, if you are like trying to, you know, convince yourself to ride your bike more. If you're a commuter. Yeah. If you're, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I had, I, I had, when we, when we had an office in Santa Monica, uh, I used to ride, I bought an electric bike and I used to ride my electric bike cause I didn't want to be all sweaty when I got there and there was no mm-hmm. showers or anything. So I would ride my electric bike and I did that for a good, almost every day for, I don't know, a year and a half, almost two years. Um, but we closed our office cause we didn't really need one. And, um, now we're all virtual and work at home. So that's nice. My bike has been sitting. I haven't mm-hmm. decided what to do if I should sell it and then wait for the next cool bump in technology for electric bikes and buy a new one. Or if I should just hang on to this one, I don't know. Is it a pedal assist electric bike or just electric? Yeah. It's pedal assist. Uh, you can do it. It's got two different modes where you can put it in the mode where you just start pedaling and it gives you little bumps of assist and you can mm-hmm. change the level, the amount of assist, or it's got the throttle that you use like a, like a moped or a mo- motorcycle. And I use the throttle. I, 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 but I pedal like a madman. So, um, yeah, it, it, 
I don't know how much of my speed is generated from me and how much is from the the battery. Mm-hmm. But um, I would I would get I guess quite a lot is from the battery because I am not a sweaty mess and I'm going 20 miles an hour on the on the bike. So uh, if I was going 20 miles an hour on a bike, which I know how, how difficult that is to sustain, I would be a sweaty mess in 15 minutes. So uh, I think that electric bikes kind of get a bad name. Like people, you know, get frustrated with oh just right use a regular bike but i think it stops people like if that's the thing that's keeping you from riding your bike instead yeah. of driving a car i think like, great yeah you know because it's not it's not a it doesn't have to be a workout that's the thing mm-hmm. is when you, when you get on a bike even if it's only a like my commute was only three and a half uh, four miles it's not that far but on a bike if you're going anywhere over 10 miles an hour you're gonna sweat there's no mm-hmm. question you're going to sweat and you have to, it's a different mindset, mm-hmm. I think, you know, and if you're going to train somebody at the beach and you're a trainer, okay, that's fine. That's not the same as wearing a suit and, you know, mm-hmm. for most people, my brother-in-law in Chicago is crazy. He's been a public defender for many, many years and he lives in, he lives in the suburbs and he rides a regular commuter bike into downtown almost every day all winter long he's he's hardcore wow he's lunatic i think but um he's made it he makes it work so yeah that's a cool that's a cool bike helmet yeah i'm sorry i called it the lutron those are the lights that um you don't need to get that turn off and on with an app this is the lumos Uh, lumos the lumos Lumos. helmet um so what um how has your shift in your eating and your habits affected your immediate family ha- or has it affected them? Well, originally my daughter who's 15, she was going to do uh, it with me, but then I realized you have to be 18. You have to be 18 to do it. Well, we say that on our terms and conditions because our lawyer said we had to. Um, <laughs> my son has done it. You know, if you're willing to, as a parent, sign your kid up and vouch for them that they're, that you're going to monitor kind of their play. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I'm fine. I mean, I can't stop you from doing that. So, you know, it's really the honor system. Um, we've had, well, I was- we, cause we would, we'd love to have a kid's version of the challenge. The problem is yeah. most kids aren't, aren't in charge of what they eat. They, they, they're at the yeah. whim of their school or at their parent, what their parents will buy. So we've mm-hmm. allowed it to really just naturally propagate into the families of the, the adults that are doing the challenge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think maybe a teen version would be interesting too because it, I mean, might encourage kids to make their own food at that age, which sure, I right. would like. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I I mean, I, I really wanted to do it first too because, I mean, yeah. it's especially with girls, I think it's such a tricky um, thing to like, you don't want them to th- control what they're eating too much. I, I say, again, I say especially with girls, but it's a problem with boys too. Yeah. Um, you just don't want them to be so concerned about what they look like and, yeah. you know, controlling. Um, I just think it's, that's the time when many eating disorders start and I don't, you know, I, I, I don't want that for any of my kids. Right. And so I thought I would do it first and just see uh-huh. how it goes. And I really do think there's nothing in it. You know, I think counting points and counting calories and shooting barcodes is, is way more, um, I think leans toward the unhealthy than yep. this. There's nothing in the whole life challenge that is, that to me is an unhealthy way of living. Like right. there is, uh, it, it, there's no, I, I tend, I, I think I've been focusing a lot on the nutrition part on the, what I'm eating, because that was my thing that was really difficult. Mm-hmm. I wasn't having trouble sleeping or exercising or anything like that. But, um, but I sleep is so important for yeah. teenagers too. So I think making them do that, um, you know, making them have an incentive to do that would be good. Um, I think of with my immediate family, my husband's a little bit like, I told you so. <laughs> he, <laughs> he's like this forever. Right, right. <laughs> um, but he, uh, he's been really supportive that's of great. it. And, you know, my kids are really supportive of it too, but you know, they're, um, I think you know, that's I an interesting dynamic. Pounds. Sorry. What, sorry. That? I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Sorry. Uh, no, I was, I've lost eight pounds, which oh, um, awesome. is great for me. Yep. Um, and you know, I've said stuff to them and they're like, but you looked great before. So they're, um, they're very sweet 13 year old boys. Right. <laughs> so, um, 
because yeah, I don't want to stress weight loss as the main thing, but right. um yeah, we you always know. we always like we always encourage people to look at weight loss as a, the the natural byproduct of of shifting your habits and and not not to get too wrapped up in the results of because some people will go through the challenge and not lose any weight at all. Yeah. We in fact we got an email from someone uh, a couple days ago who is not playing the current game, but she said she'd been meaning to email us for a long time about how different her life is as a result of having done the challenge. You know, she's done like four or five challenges. And um, how, you know, impactful making those daily decisions has been on her life, even though she had, didn't lose any weight doing the challenge. Um, and uh, but we get people all the time that, you know, they they get off their blood pressure medication or they get off their their cholesterol reducing medication or they, you know, and, and it's not necessarily people don't know how it's going to impact them, mm-hmm. um, you know, and and. I think that's a very healthy way to approach your health is to what are the things each day that I can choose to do that are going to move me forward in a direction that I'm happy with about the way I, the way I manage my well being. Mm-hmm. What's one thing I could do, you know, like, mm-hmm. and let go of, oh, I need to lose weight. And you look in the mirror and go, ah, I'm not losing weight. And it just becomes a negative self-fulfilling prophecy. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's great that you've, that you've lost weight and it would be great too if you didn't as long yeah. as it was doing something positive for your life. Right. I mean, just being more mindful about everything. The other thing is I always, you know, I mean, there's a big, I know you think that wheat is really, you know, bad for you and um, it, it can be. I mean, here's the thing is that's a broad generalization that for many, many people, it's a, it's not a great thing. I, I find it doesn't upset my stomach much to my, sugar. I almost wish it did because yeah then I would really have another reason not to eat it. But, uh, you know, it also has a real negative effect on your blood sugar levels. But when I did a, I did this, this, um, glucose tolerance test, I spent like three weeks testing different foods. So I wake up first thing in the morning, I had a blood glucose monitor, which is pricks your finger and you get a little blood and you test it. And I, and I was testing different carbohydrates and I fully expected a, a slight, it was two slices of bread it seemed like a massive volume of bread to me when I, when I ate it, I couldn't eat it with anything else. So it was dry bread. And of all the carbohydrates I tested, it had the least impact, including fruit, Le- the least impact on my blood sugar levels, like an hour and a half or two hours later when I tested. So it's just interesting. It, it, it doesn't necessarily, it's not universal. Nothing is universal. There's no such thing as something that's, you know, universal well that was the thing like i thought okay well i eat a lot of bread i eat a lot of wheat um what if you know what's going to happen am i going to feel totally different and i didn't it wasn't like i you know after a week or two weeks or even three weeks i was just like i'm a new person like you know and i feel great but there's so many i've made so many changes and it just doesn't feel like there's always you know i'm always curious like well am i one of those gluten intolerant people and like my life right. would be like i would be a superhero if i just didn't eat bread and right. so far i'm not a superhero i feel better <laughs> but it's just, right right it's good to know these things you yeah. know that um yeah like a nice piece of crusty bread every once in a while isn't gonna change my life right right have you tried any um intermittent fasting you know what that is? I know what that is. And Kevin also has a fasting app. Um, I forgot what that one is called. I feel like it's it's one word, like Oak. But um, I don't know that app. I haven't seen that app. Maybe it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, Kevin, just look up Kevin Rose's yeah. fasting app. Yep. I downloaded it, but I didn't use it. Um, is that ever part of the challenge, fasting? It's not part of the challenge. We talk about it. You know, um, we, we don't have it in any of the rules or anything else because it, it is a little bit on the edge, you know, um, I don't know that it's something that I would necessarily prescribe to the world, although it's becoming more that to me, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, everybody's liver and kidneys and pancreas need breaks and giving it a, you know, what the way I do it is I, I, I try to squeeze my meals into an eight hour period each day. So Mm -hmm. if I finish eating the night before at eight, um, I don't, I try not to eat until noon the next day so that I eat all my meals between noon and 8 PM. And, uh, that has worked really well for me. I, 
The only thing I do allow myself to drink in the morning is I have coffee with butter in it, with bu- butter or coconut oil. Um, so I'm not fully like, if you were to really, from a medical grade standpoint of a fast, I'm really not fasting, mm-hmm. but it's good enough for me. And I've reduced a lot of calories and it's funny to me, like where do all these, I didn't need all this. I didn't need yeah. all that food, you know? And that's not the only way to intermittent fast. You know, you could do it, you could do a 24 hour fast once a week. You mm-hmm. could, you know, but it's it's giving your body these, an impetus to have to, first of all, get to relax and not secrete insulin for a period of time because your blood sugar level's not going up because you're not giving it any glucose and to give your digestive system a break and to not cause it any sort of need to do work. It's it's just a good thing. And it's something that we've been doing for millennia because when food wasn't available all the time, we would guess what we wouldn't do. We wouldn't eat if you didn't have it, you know? So it's interesting. I, I guess I sort of did a version of that. I used to go to a Bikram yoga class, um, four or five times a week at nine in the morning. And that was before I came back to work full time uh, uh-huh. <laughs> and it's nine to 10 30. And you know, I wouldn't get to eat until like 11 30. So I'm a early dinner eater. So it's kind of the same thing. And you know, you don't want to eat before Bikram yoga unless right. you want to throw up. Right. Um, right. <laughs> and so, and it was, it was all good. And you just realize, like, wow, I didn't really need to eat breakfast. Yeah. You know, I think breakfast is good, but if you're going to be working out from nine to 11, like you don't need to eat before that. Right. Right. Did, um, Oh, I just lost, completely lost my train of thought. Um, was it about Bikram or fasting? No, or? no, it was, uh, I have no idea what I, I've literally, that was really weird. Like I usually don't go that completely blank. <laughs> Well, I, I spoke oh, to, I, I interviewed a neuroscientist yeah, right. um, last week, uh, Adam Ghazali. Do you know him? I don't know him, no. Uh, he is, uh, he's working on the, the FDA approvals uh, for the first FDA approved video game. Wow. Um, and for kids with ADHD, uh, but he's also worked with Alzheimer's patients. And he says uh, age 23 is when the brain starts to um, in terms of like memory and cognitive function, that's when it starts to go down. So. Wow. <laughs> but, hey, I got to ask you, I got to ask you a question. Cause this week in the challenge, we're doing the, um, brain games, right? We're doing mm-hmm. the mind, the mind games. And I'm, mm-hmm. I've been doing brain HQ for all, for, I don't know, three months. And so that's just my mind game. Do those work? Do you know, have you, uh, have you tested I have them? heard that they don't, like that the science behind them is a bit unproven. And I did ask Adam Ghazali that, and um, he agreed that it, it was the, what they're, what they're, the claims they're making are not all true. Right. But I think, you know, the point of the mindfulness challenge is just to be focused on one thing and yeah. to, to, to have that focus on one thing I think is important. I've tried brain HQ. I tried it um, after you um, mentioned it on, um, and I, yeah, I, 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 I've also talked to a uh, psychotherapist about it too, and I think that if you enjoy them and they give you pleasure, then you know, in then good, then it's great. But I think that they're not that different than just maybe like playing any other game. Yeah, I, I, I wonder that. You know, like there's a lot of cognitive neuro requirements to play Fortnite that mm-hmm. perhaps are as beneficial as Brain HQ. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I don't know if I should admit that to my son. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't, so. He doesn't need more reasons to play Fortnite. Um. <laughs> well, I I think that um, yeah, I've I've downloaded a bunch more of those apps that I've used in the past. Like there's Lumosity, and yeah. Peak, yep, and um, Elevate, yep. And so I've tried all of them uh, a little bit in my ten minutes. But I think I also. Uh, played a lot of Scrabble with my kids and right, I felt like right. that was just you know that was the same and words yeah. with friends I've been that's what I've been using as mostly that that's the most I get the most enjoyment out of words with, with friends I've than never I do played that. I've never, but, I, but I discovered this this app um, you know it's funny I discovered on the app store the the home they, they have this new thing now uh, where they have articles about apps, right? Like mm-hmm. at the ver- when you first open the app, if you don't mm-hmm. go to search or go, don't go to update, 
the and Today I, page. The Today page, yeah, the Today yeah. page. And um, I discovered, a, I think it's called Bonza, Bonza Jigsaw and Bonza Word. And it's it's these very coolly functioning Bonza Word is like a Scrabble or it's like a it's like a crossword it's not like crossword puzzle because there's there's one subject for the whole puzzle so like it mm-hmm. could be water and you know you've got like faucet and you've got bathtub and you've got kitchen sink and and but the the words are all broken up into these pieces and you have to assemble the pieces in the game and it's it's really pretty fun and then the jigsaw one is a jigsaw puzzle and you have to kind of put the jigsaw puzzle together and it's really well graphically displayed and cool. And I've been, been enjoying that. That was this week for this challenge that I thought, Oh, this is kind of cool too. Yeah. I like the, the, the today page on the app store. I have a friend who writes for them um, now, but it's good if you're ever looking for a topic um, or you're just kind of like, I just want to, I, I don't know that anyone really goes to the app store saying like, I just want to download some more apps. Right. But, right. <laughs> But is are those pages indexed somewhere? Can you go back in time and like? Usually, if you search, they'll often come up in search. But the App Store search is very bad. Yes, um, yes. So <laughs> it's it's very hard. But I did just recently something did come up. So the articles will it'll find articles from the today from the today from the past today's. Occasionally, it will oh, if it's doing if it's do, if it's working correctly. Yes, right. huh. it will. Uh, but you can't get them like you can't read them on the web or anything. They won't come up. Um, they'll only come up on an iPad or an iPhone. So I guess it's really encouraging people to go to see it every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, like they want to consider it like a magazine. Yep. Yeah, right. But a magazine, you could keep the old issues. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> um, all right, so look. So I know we're running out of time, which. Um, I, this has been so fun for me, like talking to you and. God, I feel like it's just been very, very organic and natural. And I thank you for coming on. Um, oh, thank you for having me. I usually don't ask people to if I can come on their podcasts, <laughs> but uh, I really wanted to talk to you because I mean, just this. I I think it's really unique what you're doing. Just the fact that it's a game, and I don't know. I just feel like it's. Uh, I do hope that it's changing my life forever. But yeah, me too. We'll see. Me too. But I wanted to ask you, you know, in, in closing and, and if this is too big of a question, then you can just cut me off. But, um, what are, what are some of your non-negotiables that you've like in your, in your day, your work day now and your, your, your home day that you are, that are essential for you to keep your sanity? I mean, I already know exercise is one of them. Mm -hmm. Um, but what are, what are, do you have any others and what, what do those look like? Um, that's a good I am a bullet journaler. Oh, cool. Do you <laughs> Do you know Bo, do you know Boho Berry? No. She was on my podcast guest a while ago. She is got this she's got she's one of the coolest artists, bullet journal artists that I glummed onto early in bullet journaling and I tried at one point to do it like she does and it just it just became too much work for me cuz yeah. it's but it's, it's so inspiring her her stuff and the, the ease in which she does it 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 and, and and i think it's a lot of her stuff rubbed off on on um some of the creative the creative ways of bullet journaling that that exist yeah, but yeah she, wait really do you cool. pr- i always pronounced it bujo am i pronouncing it wrong i don't know is it bujo berry no i don't well i just i've heard the term it's b u g j o right i thought it was b o h o but now that you're oh so maybe that, boho okay i thought it was i would thought i was pronouncing bujo wrong is it is like, it like, bujo or is it boho i've gotten many things wrong already in this last hour <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i you know ask my business partner michael how often i butcher i mean i get things wrong all the time it's amazing i got your name right when you first count on the <laughs> Because I just like Andy. Where did you come up with that from? Let's see. B o h o b. Let's see if this is it. Yeah, it's boho. It's b o h o berry. Um, Yeah, she was a podcast guest of mine. uh, I don't know, six months ago. And um, anyway, you were telling me about. Totally went down uh, a wormhole. My bring my bullet journal everywhere I go. Uh That's non negotiable. And it's it's odd to people because I'm such a tech person and they're like, Well, have you tried Evernote? And have you tried Google Keep? And have you tried yes, I've tried every one of them. 
and putting pen to paper is that's one of my non-negotiables i right, guess right um i mean i've tried like the there's like matte screen covers for your ipad that you can put on and then use the apple pencil which i have and but i just uh that's something like every morning i just spend about i don't know five or ten minutes kind of um planning out and like i i give myself six tasks only per day mm-hmm. um i know you interviewed david allen and i listened to yeah, that too. yeah yeah he schooled I'm me such- he totally right. schooled me <laughs> called me out come on andy what are you talking about you either do it or you don't do it what is this somewhere in the middle <laughs> i know i was like i just i was like well i was looking through all the people i was like oh that can't be the David Allen that he interviewed. And then, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm an early geek, David Allen geek. I mean, I read that book back in like whenever it came out. I, yeah. yeah I so that. I, um, I'm big on that. So that is something that I, and I, I'm not an artist. So like, I don't do all the art. It's just, um, like I do six tasks. I usually do on the weekdays. I give myself six work tasks that I have to accomplish in the day and six, uh, home tasks that mm-hmm. I have to accomplish in the day. And then the weekends, it's just six tasks in general and some of them are occasionally work but most of them are home stuff um and and then i use the bullet journal like i do all the indexing so that Uh you know if i have a project that i'm working on i'll just you know write all the ideas and then put them in an index or if it's like oh products that i want to review or people that i want to interview or anything like that so that is something i started i've been doing about two years and it really has helped me um incredibly just so much just because I have so much all going in my mind and it's how you know David Allen says like get it out of your mind get it on paper and then you can use your mind for more creative stuff do you keep it with you all the time and write stuff in it as you think of them like how do you do that I do yeah yeah and occasionally like I if I don't have it with me I'll use my Apple watch and I just you know say take a note to put this in my bullet journal Oh, that's cool and um so and then it's you know it syncs so it's on my phone and I can write it in there right and you know people make fun of like what if you lose it and um yeah it would be bad if i lose it <laughs> it's not backed up i don't have a it's not i know yeah, it but doesn't it's really anything. The act of doing it that yeah. is the important thing not necessarily what's on it and i've tried um uh moleskine huh? i don't know know how to pronounce it's not moleskin have, it's not it's not moleskin i think it's moleskin oh yeah, i think you're right i, I, I don't know if i'm right or not because i'm no i think it's never thought mole, of it any other way or mole moleskin mole, i don't know, mo, um, <laughs> I know, know. like as an italian i should pronounce it moleskin yeah but um they have a smart pen and a smart notebook oh. so you can write and then it automatically as you're writing the paper is has you know these tiny little dots on it and it'll just sync to your app on uh-huh. your phone uh-huh. so but i don't really like the pen i don't like the way the pen feels so isn't, I, it, am- I isn't it amazing though though the slightest thing could be off because i've mm-hmm. tried i tried when when i first got an ipad to convert to just okay I'm, I'm all electronic now no more writing paper and i just it just couldn't i couldn't do it it couldn't mm-hmm. like the smoothness of the glass and then the the way the pens felt and it's amazing how just a little bit off and it it's not it just Mm -hmm. so yeah that's one and then reading fiction like i'm always um i always want to be reading a novel and it's harder and harder as i get older and you know there's more stuff on the internet (laughs) to read but just um you know around nine o'clock to turn all the devices off I turn them all in automatic do not disturb mode starting Uh at nine nine to seven so um and then just spend some time reading before I go to sleep. Do you read um, like trashy fiction or do you read really classic literature or what's your choice? I think somewhere in between. <laughs> Usually just, um, you know, uh, I'll occasionally read classic literature, but it's usually just, uh, you know, literary fiction, uh-huh. new stuff. Yep. Um, yeah, that's, uh, and yeah, I also, um, have a paper subscription to the New Yorker and that's also important. That's become, that's a recent thing. So if I don't have a novel going, then I'll read that. Um, And I don't read books in a Kindle or anything like that. That's just, it still has to be paper for me. I recently rediscovered the joy of opening a real book. And uh, I, I found that I found that I missed it. I, it was, I, I started reading. So this is funny. Um, Tim Ferriss talked a lot about 
the book, the graveyard book on his podcast on multiple podcasts. He refers uh-huh. to the graveyard book, how great the graveyard book is. And I bought the, it. Is that by Neil Gaiman? By Neil Gaiman. Yeah. yeah. And I bought it uh, and it sat on my shelf for, I don't know, two years. And, uh, because I was reading everything on the Kindle and I didn't even really remember I had it. And the beginning of this year, I decided I was going to start to read fiction and cause I was tired of only reading like self-help books in the category of whole life challenge. And, uh, I, I first read a book that my son had to read for school called rain rain, which is a kid's book about a girl and her dog, which I, I just loved it. It was, it was, you know, it's a kid's book, but it was awesome. It was just a really fun story. And then I thought, Hey, I got another, it's a, it's a children's book. The, the Neil Gaiman, the graveyard book. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like, Tim Ferriss says this is a life, like f- phenomenal book, like his favorite book of all time. I'm like, I, okay, I'm going to read it now. And he was right. <laughs> it's so good. It is so good. I loved it. And then I read all the Chronicles of Narnia again. And I just got on this real kick of reading like, books for children i don't know somewhere in the teen years mm-hmm. um and just have had so much fun reading again it's, it doesn't yeah. have to be something i'm learning which yeah. which uh i usually i like the kindle for that because i get to highlight things and mm-hmm. i get to refer back to stuff um but boy it's so good to have a physical book in your hand mm-hmm. it's nice i, I know I, you read the phantom toll booth too I yeah found. yeah Read that. Oh, I'm reading that again. I read that to my son, and now he's reading it, and I'm reading it along with him. I'm keeping up with him so that I'm current with where where he's at because it's a it's a it's a challenging book. It's got a lot of double. Is are they called double entendres? The, like double yeah. me, tr- double and triple meanings. Like he was. We were talking about. There's this part where there's a witch who's in the who's in the dungeon, and but she's not a w i t c h. She's a w h i c h. And uh, I just love that stuff. But I, yeah. you know, I want to make sure that he's getting that. As a, right. so, I'm I'm asking him questions about it, which is kind of fun. Yeah, I read that to my boys when they were younger. But yeah, there's a lot you don't get when you're just being read to. But maybe I should put it on there, make them read it because what I have one of them is Milo after the book. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh God, you gotta he's got to read that. It's yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> tick and talk, tick that only says talk and talk that only yeah. says tick. <laughs> It's just so good. Yeah, so I guess those are all my my things that You're I can't live without. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing and being so open. And um, it's just been super awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for creating the whole life challenge. Thanks for for doing it. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah, of course. Hey, it's Andy, and thanks so much for listening. If you want to know more about what I'm learning each month, head over to andypetronic.com and subscribe to my monthly newsletter. If you were touched, moved, or inspired by anything you heard today, chances are someone else you know would be too. Please take a moment to think about who and send them a link to this episode. And if you're super stoked, please head over to iTunes to write a review. The best way to keep current on guests and episodes is to subscribe so that the latest one will automatically get delivered straight to your phone. The apps I use for this are Apple Podcasts, Overcast, or Pocket Casts. The Andy Petronic Podcast is produced by our team, Winslow Jenkins, Becca Borowski, and Ernie Hurtado. Big thanks to Nikki Grudadaria for the artwork. You can find all of our episodes, links, and complete show notes at wholelifechallenge.com forward slash podcast. I'm Andy Petronic. Thanks for listening.